Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Zoo Nerd. Uh, coming to you live from my backyard in Los Angeles, California. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about cats. And by cats, I mean the entire family of anything that is a cat. Um, we're gonna stay pretty general and then I'll do future episodes that will talk about some species more specifically. Um, so science is still kind of debating how many species of cats there are. And we're not talking about like a long haired cat versus a Siamese cat. We're talking about like a lion versus a tiger versus an ocelot and all those things in between. So the numbers that they have right now are anywhere between 36 and 40 species of cats. And the reason there's some discrepancy is because there's a kind of cat called a wild cat that they have debated back and forth whether it's multiple species or multiple subspecies of wild cats. And the reason wild cats are important, they're um, sometimes called Arabian wild cats, European wild cats, Asiatic wild cats, Scottish wild cats. These are all uh, possible um, ancestors of our domestic cats that we have. They were all descended from those species. Um, so as science figures out, are those separate species or just subspecies, that will kind of determine how many numbers of species of cats there are. The cat family is very uh, diverse in size, with the largest being the Amur tiger, that's A-M-U-R. Um, previously in life, those were called Siberian tigers. They've changed the name probably in the last 15 years or so because they don't live in Siberia anymore. Um, they disappeared from Siberia quite a while ago, but they do live in a region of Russia called the Amur River Valley. And that's uh, in far eastern Russia, uh, just north of China and north of Korea. And it's possible that some Amur tigers live in both those uh, spaces. But Amur tigers are the biggest cats uh, that occur naturally on Earth, and they can weigh about 550 pounds for a big male, which is huge. Um, they are definitely very large cats. Um, some of the zoos here in the United States have Amur tigers. Um, I'll post some links later with some videos of them. They're amazing cats, um, really enormous. Uh, the smallest cats is also kind of up for debate because they've weighed some of the one species and they have a good idea of how much they weigh. But the other species is less well known and the ones they've weighed weigh in about the same range. And so those two species are called black footed cats, which are just itty bitty guys uh, that weigh between two to four pounds. They come from South Africa. Um, I have seen them in the zoo, in Utah's Hogel Zoo, they had them and they're one of the few zoos that I know of that has bred them successfully. Um, really adorable cats. I'll also try to get a link up for them. Um, the other species of really small cat is called a rusty spotted cat, and they come from India and Sri Lanka, um, and they're about that same weight range of two to four pounds. So it's kind of still being debated which species is truly the smallest species of cat. Uh, different people have different opinions on that. Um, but some things about cats in general is that they are all carnivores. So that means they eat meat. Um, cats are sometimes called absolute carnivores in that they don't eat other things. And it's really rare that they would try. Um, most cats are excellent hunters and they usually prefer to eat things that they have hunted. Um, and it's rare that they would scavenge on other animals' kills or eat uh, things that have been long-term dead. With some exceptions to that, of course, there's always exceptions. Um, and one of those biggest exceptions are lions. Lions will definitely take over kill sites of other cats and, and other animals. So they will chase off hyenas, cheetahs, or leopards off of anything they kill and claim it for themselves. But in general, cats like to eat fresh dead meat. They don't like to eat things that died a long time ago like some other carnivores like wolves or bears may do. Um, cats are also usually solitary. That means they typically live alone. Um, that's a question we get a lot of in a zoo setting is why don't you have a big group of tigers or why don't you have a big group of leopards? Why aren't they together as a family? Cats don't really live that way. Uh, again, the exception being lions. Lions live in a big group called a pride. And there is another cat that sometimes lives in a group 
called cheetahs. And cheetahs, when they live in groups, it's usually a mom with her cubs that may stay up to a year or so with her. But more commonly, it's a group of boys that hang out together. And that's called a coalition of cheetahs. And the cheetahs that I saw when I visited in Africa, um, that was definitely the case of what was going on. They called them the cheetah brothers, and they're fairly certain that two of them for sure were from the same litter. The other was maybe a brother from another group of, of cheetahs that kind of joined in with them, or maybe a, an older sibling from the same mom from a previous litter. But there were three of them that hung out for years together. Uh, at a very special place in Kenya called Lewa Wildlife Conservancy and they were known as the Cheetah Brothers and they did a lot of amazing um, documentary film work with them when they were around so really cool information about the cheetahs who live in a coalition and with that the male cheetahs are able to hunt slightly larger prey than they normally would because they can kind of work together and go after things more like medium-sized antelope or uh, these three that were well documented in Kenya went after things as big as an ostrich. Uh, cats are generally very good climbers. That's why I have this bigger tree behind me today uh, to kind of show that they can climb really well. Uh, most cats are really good climbers, including some of the big ones. Um, people usually say like, oh, that cat's too big, he can't climb. Aside from a really heavy male lion, pretty much all cats are really good at climbing. Um, at the zoo I worked at in Phoenix, Arizona, we had a male tiger who used to climb up in his tree all the time. And it was really amazing and a little bit frightening to see how good he could climb up in the big tree in his yard. Um, because he was a big boy, uh, probably about 250 pounds or so, and he could climb probably 20 or 25 feet up off the ground in his tree. And that was a little scary to see, for sure. Um, one thing that I think is really cool and it's really interesting to watch and if you've ever been licked by a cat you may notice this they have rough tongues and they have these little spines on their tongue called papillae and that helps them with grooming and some scientists have also said it helps them um, when they're eating to kind of remove some of the hair off the animals they're eating and maybe even get some of that flesh off of bones cats uh, big cats especially do like to chew on bones. Um, I've seen that with lions out in Africa and definitely the lions that I helped take care of when I was a zookeeper. Um, cats also have some really strong senses, uh, particularly their sense of smell, their sense of hearing, and their sense of vision are all way better than what we have as humans for those senses. Um, cats can move their ears mostly independently, so they can move their right ear or their left ear, or both ears, different directions at different times, to kind of find the sound. And with that, they're able to really hunt using their sense of hearing. Um, some cats hunt exclusively at night or in low light conditions. Most cats are what we would call crepuscular. Ah, that's kind of a fun new word. Um, so you've probably heard of nocturnal, which is animals that are active at night. You've maybe heard of diurnal, which are animals active during the day. Crepuscular are animals that are active on both ends of that. So they're active at sunrise, they're active at sunset, and a couple hours of each side of that. So they get up early in the morning, go for a hunt, go look around, look for some food, get some water, socialize with any other cats in their area that they need to, and then they'll take a big nap during the day, and then they'll wake up again before sunset, do the same kind of things, and then sleep during the middle of the night. So that's called crepuscular. A fun new word for us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the big cats. So science has identified those into a genus, which is bigger than a, uh, an individual, but a group of species that are related. And the genus is called Panthera. Um, sounds like panther. Yeah, that's intentional. Um, but these are the big cats. Uh, for many years, they identified those as being lions, leopards, tigers, and jaguars. And recently, some scientists have argued to also include the cats called snow leopards, which are not true leopards, they're their own unique species. So depending on who you ask, the big cats consist of five different big species of cats, the lions, tigers, leopards, jaguars, and snow leopards. 
Um, the big cats are typically capable of roaring, so they can be a little more vocal. Um, cats that are smaller than that can make small sounds like hissing or chirping, um, but typically don't roar. Um, roars are very important, especially for lions in um, kind of announcing their territory and also tigers, leopards, and jaguars definitely do that. Snow leopards would be able to make a little less vocalization and that's why they're kind of that iffy fifth member of the, the genus Panthera. With lions, uh, lions typically live in Africa. That's where most of us think of, of lions being and they would live south of the Sahara Desert. Uh, they traditionally did live in the Sahara and above the Sahara in countries like Egypt, um, but they've kind of been wiped out of those areas and live pretty much south of the Sahara and typically prefer the grasslands and the, the like drier forest areas. They're not in the rainforest so much. So when they say that lions are king of the jungle, that's not really true. Lions don't live in jungles. They live in more of a dry forest and more of a grassland setting. Uh, there is also a, a subspecies of lion called the Asiatic lion. And these are the lions that exist in a very small population in an area of India called the Gir Forest. Um, they're really cool. They look pretty much like African lions, but they live very far away in India. Um, I have seen Asiatic lions in zoos in Europe. Um, several of the zoos in Europe are focusing on breeding them as they are a critically endangered species with only about 200 of them remaining in the wild. Um, I also have worked with lions as a zookeeper and they were really a fascinating species to work with. Um, they're enormous, but they could definitely still be very, very sneaky. Uh, one of my favorite things about working with the lions I worked with, they were both older animals. Um, at the time I worked with them, they were uh, both 19, which is pretty old for a lion. In the wild, lions would typically live maybe a male to about 10, maybe 12 years old, and a female probably 12 to 15 years old. So a 19-year-old lion is well beyond their wildlife expectancy, but it does happen in zoos because they don't have to compete with other animals for their food. They're not getting kicked in the face by zebras or antelope as they hunt, and they uh, have medical care when something does go wrong. So they live a little longer in zoos. Um, but the female lion that I worked with in the morning as we would show up to work, she would uh, just be kind of sitting and looking around. And as you walked in front of her exhibit, she would stare you down and look at you very intently and follow every move that you make. And when you got close enough to the front of her exhibit, she would run towards you. Um, she would stop just shy of where the water was uh, that would separate you from her. And she would stare you down very intently. Uh, I was very convinced that if I was ever in the same space as her, she would probably kill me. Um, she had very stealthy hunting skills and seemed to enjoy stalking her keepers on a daily basis. Um, but really interesting to work with lions. I, I am also allergic to house cats and in working with lions, I realized I'm allergic to lions. Um, so when I worked with them, I'd have to be a little cautious uh, especially of any of their loose hair. I'd have to really um, watch how much I'd breathe while I was cleaning up any loose hair that was around. And that became a, a little challenge for me in taking care of them, but it was certainly something I was able to manage. Moving on from lions, we're gonna talk a bit about tigers. Now with tigers, they have <laughs> definitely separated them originally into nine different subspecies. Unfortunately, three of those subspecies are now extinct. And those are the Bali, the Javan, and the Caspian tigers. So they are no longer with us. Um, the other species of tigers include things like the Amur tiger that we already talked about, that is the biggest. They live in the coldest areas up in Northern uh, China, North Korea, and Russia. Um, the most common type of tiger is called a Bengal tiger. Those are the tigers in India and Bangladesh. Um, Next to them, kind of over into Thailand and down through, are the Indo-Chinese tigers. And just north of those guys are the South China tigers, um, which are pretty much extinct. There's a few of them left in zoos, but they don't think that they will be around much longer either. 
And then uh, south of that, we have the Malaysian tigers that live on the very tip of the Malay Peninsula in Thailand and Malaysia. And then out on an island, we have Sumatran tigers, and those are the smallest type of tiger. Um, and that's the kind of tiger I uh, have worked with most in a zoo setting. As an educator and as a volunteer, I was never their actual keeper, um, but definitely cool animals to be around. Um, tigers are very endangered. There's some really good work being done. Um, there's an organization called Save the Tigers that has received a lot of attention to focus on how to uh, save the tigers and increase their populations. And they've been able to do some really great work um, to try to help the tigers. Uh, moving on, talking about leopards. Uh, leopards are very cool cats. They're very sneaky. They're very solitary. And um, in Africa, they're one of the animals a lot of people try to see and usually don't have much luck. Um, during my time in Africa, we spent um, most of our evening game drives kind of looking for leopards um, with little luck. It wasn't until the end of my two and a half weeks there that I, we saw leopards. We saw them on two different occasions. Um, really amazing to watch their ability to climb. Uh, for a cat that big, they climbed trees super easy. The first leopard we saw um, was coming down from a tree and we watched him come down quite easily. And typically leopards in Africa will climb up a tree with their kill, um, something like a small antelope or a gazelle, um, and they'll hide it up in the tree to hide it from bigger things like hyenas or lions that may try to steal their food. Um, but that's leopards. Leopards are widely diverse uh, range of habitats throughout Africa and throughout much of uh, Asia as well, including jungles, forests, drier spaces, deserts, um, and mountainous areas. So they can really adapt well to a wide variety of different uh, spaces. Moving on to talk a bit about jaguars. Jaguars are the big cat that are, is found in the Americas. Um, they're typically associated with the rainforest down in South America and Central America. But um, several years ago, there was some pretty unique, interesting uh, discoveries as there were some hunters in Arizona that had some dogs out and the dogs had treed something. And when the hunter got to the tree where his dogs were, up in the tree was a jaguar. And that was in the desert of Southern Arizona. Um, when that happened and he photographed that and uh, discussions started and the scientists definitely identified that jaguars definitely lived in Arizona a long time ago um, and also parts of uh, New Mexico and Texas. Um, typically the last couple hundred years they have not really been there but in recent years there have been jaguars spotted in Arizona um, and definitely there's some in, Air in uh, Mexico not too far south of the border. But jaguars are really remarkable animals that are very much in love with water and very capable swimmers. Um, I talked with some other people about some cats a few days ago, and we talked about the cats that like water, jaguars, tigers, and a smaller cat called a fishing cat, which is on the promo post for today. Those are the three cats that typically like water. Speaking of water, we're getting a little rain here. I'm gonna continue. But uh, always interesting when you're doing some work outside, you never know what the weather's gonna bring. Moving on to our fifth final big cat, the snow leopards. Snow leopards are very beautiful animals with very dense fur coats. Those fur coats have gotten them into a lot of trouble because it's a very unique and beautiful kind of grayish silver uh, spotty pattern. And they have been hunted quite a bit for their fur. Um, which is very sad. Snow leopards live in high mountainous areas of Asia, um, throughout Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the Himalayas, and over uh, through some of those countries uh, that are very mountainous, kind of in Central Asia. So now we'll talk a little bit about cats that kind of don't fit into the big cat group and don't fit into the small cat group, and I'm gonna call those the medium cats. Um, in my opinion and research, those include two cats that are really not closely related at all. The first being the cheetah um, and the second being the cougar uh, or mountain lion, puma, panther. All those names kind of mean the same cat. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the cheetah. Cheetahs are very um, unique to other cats. Um, 
in that on their tips of their paws where their claws are other cats have a retractable claw that means their claws can go disappear into their hands if you've had a house cat and ever played with it a little you may notice that that its claws can come in or out um, cats capable of doing that which is all species except cheetahs they do that to keep their claws sharp they use those claws in hunting and um, keeping their claws retracted when they're walking helps keep them sharp it also helps keep things a little quieter so that they can sneak up on their food cheetahs don't have retractable claws and there's a very important reason for that um, cheetahs are big fast runners and they need some extra traction while they run and those claws are a little bit thicker than other claws on other cats and those claws can help give them a little bit more traction while they run uh, that other medium cat although it's actually quite large is a cougar mountain lion puma or panther all those names mean the same cat um, they're quite uh, diverse in their habitats as well um, they're common through uh, portions of the western United States and of course there's some over in Florida that are called the Florida Panthers but genetically they're almost the same um, because the Florida population has been isolated they've become a little specialized they definitely live more in a swampy environment there um, versus the ones he out here in the west that live in more dry or mountainous areas um, something I learned a few years ago is that that cat, the cougar or the mountain lion, also lives throughout Central and South America. Um, they find them clear down in the Andes Mountains in South America and all the way down to the tip of Argentina and Chile. And in those spaces, they sometimes hunt things like llamas and alpacas, which is pretty unique. Um, they have a wide range of animals that they will eat. Um, here in Los Angeles, we have a very famous mountain lion. His uh, name is P-22. And a few years ago, he was photographed in front of the Hollywood sign. And if any of you have ever been to uh, Los Angeles and seen the Hollywood sign, you know that it is not far from most of the city. And that cat, P-22, lives in the Hollywood Hills. So it lives in and around uh, people in a very big park setting. Um, he is definitely protected, but he finds his way into neighborhoods um, and various other locations around there all the time. Um, he has a radio collar. The local uh, parks people monitor his movement from uh, at all the time. Um, I have never seen a mountain lion in the wild, although they are definitely around. Um, very curious and solitary cats that are pretty good at keeping themselves hidden even though they live in and around places with people. Um, I'm gonna just briefly talk uh, about some small cats. There are 33 different species of small cats. I'll put up a really good link that kind of talks a little more about them. Um, some we know a lot about, some we know hardly anything about. Um, some of them are very secretive cats that live in very thick jungles or very rugged terrain. And so they haven't been studied very well. There's a few of them that we have very few even photos of the cats. We don't really know how they live. We don't know what they eat, where they go, what their life cycle is like. Um, but we can kind of base a lot of things on some of their relatives, on some of the other cats. For instance, there are some uh, small cats that we do know a lot about, that we have studied a lot, and we can kind of make comparisons based on body size and habitats of what those cats may eat, how they may live. Um, and some of those things that uh, we've kind of identified that are general across all cats. Uh, one of those is that cats need a lot of sleep. If you have a cat at home, you know this too. Uh, they sleep a lot, like 12 to 16 hours a day. And uh, in my work with zoos, people often ask, why are the lions always sleepy? Why are the tigers always asleep? Well, they're not always asleep, but they do sleep a lot. And that's just like your cat at home. They like to be very sleepy animals. Uh, they kind of focus their attention on when they need food or when they need to do other things in life, like get some water or maybe use the restroom, those kind of things. And most of the rest of their time, they spend resting or grooming themselves. And they're pretty sleepy animals. Um, the average for most species of cats is between 12 to 16 hours of sleep a day. And out of a 24-hour period, that's a lot of sleep. 
particularly older individual cats sleep more. Um, I know my cat growing up, she loved to sleep in the sun. Um, most cats do, house cats anyway, and some big cats do too. Uh, definitely in working with the lions at the zoo, I found that on a cool day, they would always find a warm spot to lay where they could get some sun. And if it was a warm day, then they'd find a shady spot and lay under a shady tree. Um, things like a tiger or a jaguar will definitely take a little nap in some shallow water to cool themselves down. That concludes most of what I had prepared today to talk about cats. Um, I'm going to scroll back through, see if I can see some questions. I saw one pop up just a moment ago. Oh, somebody wanted to know if male lions are bigger. Yes, male lions are bigger. Um, that's typical about most species of cats. The males are usually about 10 to 20 percent bigger than the females. Um, male lions are big because they have to defend the territory from other male lions. Um, there's kind of a lot of different theories about that. There's been a lot of um, talk about how the females do most of the hunting and although that can be true, it isn't always necessarily true. Um, the lions I saw in Africa, the, the ones that I saw eating, I saw a female lion that had killed a zebra and she was sitting on top of that zebra and waiting for the rest of her pride to show up. Another lion was kind of off in the distance and had eaten a bit already and was waiting in the shade. But they were both girls waiting for the rest of the family to show up. Uh, I did see two male lions that had taken a kill over from some hyenas um, and they were definitely eating. Um, they are definitely capable of hunting themselves on their own as well. Um, most male lions spend some time away from a pride when they're kind of like a teenager lion. Uh, they will definitely have to hunt for themselves to, in order to survive. But most male cats are bigger than female cats. Um, definitely true in any of the big cats for sure. Jaguars, lions, leopards, tigers, um, snow leopards too. Our special shout out today is to an organization called panthera.org. They do a lot of really amazing conservation work to help increase the numbers of uh, cats out there and to educate local people about the importance of cats. Um, we've definitely learned that having large predators is important for an ecosystem. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our episode that I do in a few days on wolves. Um, because we have some really great information about that. But panthera.org is doing a lot of really great work to help out our friends who are cats. Um, most cat species are endangered. I don't know any that are totally non-endangered other than house cats. Speaking of domestic cats, house cats, um, they actually have caused some problems. In places where there aren't a lot of land predators, particularly island areas, and when there were no cats that lived there natively, places like Hawaii or Australia. Uh, domestic cats have now caused a big problem threatening the lives of um, small animals that live there that didn't ever have to worry about this uh, predator that could eat them, um, particularly some birds. Um, Hawaii had a big struggle with cats that ate a lot of their native bird populations and a lot of those birds are now endangered because of cats. And Australia the same way with some of their small uh, marsupials and cats. Uh, New Zealand too. So any of those island groups that didn't have cats now face a big problem because of domestic cats that live out there uh, on their own. So that concludes what we have to talk about cats today. I hope you've enjoyed things. I hope you learned something and I hope you're taking care of yourself and staying safe. Until tomorrow, signing off. Have fun.